I have a secret for you. I am leaving the show tonight, off stage. I'm going to Afghanistan. Are you coming back? <laughs> of course I'm coming back. I hope to, I hope I am. I'm going to go and sing for the troops. 4,000 miles away, in the unforgiving Afghan desert, Camp Bastion couldn't be further away from home. For the last two years, I've been planning to go there and perform for the troops. But this would be no ordinary concert. I'm not taking my band. Instead, I'm going to invite members of the British Armed Forces who live and work on the front line to perform with me. Professional soldiers with a love of music. Together, we would join forces in what would become the most memorable gig of my life. I'm in the middle of the biggest TV show on tele. It's all glitz, glamour lights and all the rest of it, and it's going to be a big shock. It's going to be a big change. This is where the showbiz ends. Where the real business begins. Okay, let's go. I've got my malaria tablets. Yeah. I've got to be honest, I'm a bit scared. Um, I've not told my mum where I'm going. Well, I considered at one point not telling my wife, but I thought she might miss me by Tuesday night. The kids are worried. You know, I've had little Daisy crying this morning. She didn't want me to go, and they're just worried. If I don't see you again, concert for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Hall. All yeah. right. Don't have Robbie on. Please <laughs> Flying out under the cover of darkness, it will take 24 hours to reach Camp Bastion. From Bryce Norton, a military base in Oxfordshire, I'll be travelling out with the soldiers from the 7th Armoured Brigade, more commonly known as the Desert Rats. They're deploying for six to nine months. I can't help but think how long that is and how tough that must be for them and their families, especially over Christmas. We're flying out on a C-17 military transport plane, big enough to carry up to 13 Land Rovers, designed to be able to land on inhospitable airstrips. I'm told it's the perfect aeroplane for flying into a combat zone. No one says a word. There's a real sense of apprehension. It's a long journey. Plenty of time to think about where we're going. As we enter Afghan airspace, we're instructed to put on our body armor in case of small arms fire. And the pilots must now fly the plane in complete darkness to evade enemy contact. Coming to land, a question of who made the right decision. How was that? Scary. After so much talk and planning, I find it hard to believe that I'm here in Afghanistan. Uh, five, 
this morning. It was just quick to half eight. So I've got to tell much to do today. I need to get up. It's not a nice sound, is it, that? It's so alien, isn't it? It's so alien. You just never see stuff like this. It's a busy place, you know, people doing jobs, people moving stuff around and getting on with their day to day. Situated in a remote area of the Afghan desert in Helmand province, the camp is the size of Reading accommodates thousands of troops, has a field hospital and a large airfield. This is where Prince Harry was stationed when he was serving as an Apache pilot. Although Camp Bastion is a stronghold, it's still a target for the insurgents and there is a high risk of attack. Up until the point I arrived here in Afghanistan, 446 British servicemen and women have sadly lost their lives since the war began. The Prime Minister has announced that combat operations will finish by the end of 2014. The Desert Rats will be one of the last brigades to be stationed at Camp Bastion. It's their job to collect equipment from the forward operating bases as they close down. To do this, large convoys of trucks and armoured vehicles drive through central Helmand at high risk of insurgent attacks. No, 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 don't stop. The last thing we want to do here is uh, put the station really. That's the second One of the truck drivers is Corporal Sean Fowler, a reservist from Peterborough who normally works as a builder. So you've just got to be aware of little things like this. to break down, but unfortunately we just have to push through it. I'm told that Sean takes his guitar with him when he's out on the road. I'm keen to meet him and see if he wants to join our band. This is Corporal Fowler. Yeah, Hello, right. sir. Honoured to meet you. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. How are you? Great, yeah. Very nice to, to be here. Brilliant. It's, really, it's a pleasure to have you here, to be honest. Thank you. How the hell have you got here? <laughs> volunteered. Volunteered? Yeah, I volunteered to come here. Okay. Who volunteers to come from Afghanistan? We do. <laughs> Getting a bit old for this now. I think this, this would be my, my last tour, obviously. I won't, I won't do this again. How old are you? 45. 45, <laughs> OK. 45. So similar age to me. So, I mean, from what I've sort of picked up so far, leaving the camp's the dangerous bit. Definitely, absolutely. I mean, there are, there are dangers here as well, obviously, um, but not as not as a high risk as what it is out on the ground. What what are the risks? Um, well, out, out out there. Yeah. Obviously, um, small arms, IEDs. The IED threat is the biggest threat to us being in the vehicles. That that is our main issue. An IED is an improvised explosive device. That, um, the Taliban can. They, they're they're very clever. They can make out of anything. It can be placed in front of our vehicles on the side of the road. Um, if the vehicle runs over that, then obviously there's a big bang and we, we get casualties. I just think the general kind of unknown is the scariest bit. It is, it is scary. You, you just don't know. You've got a family at home? I have got family at home, yeah. Okay. What's that like? Obviously, you think about your family all the time, but you have to respect that they're, they're the ones that are left behind and, 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 and it's hard for them as well. My partner, Kate, she's always known that I've wanted to do Afghanistan. There was times of moments where I thought I don't I don't I'm not too sure but straight away Kate would back me up and say no you need to go and do Afghan get it out of the way get it out of your system I think about my children all the time Chloe uh, my daughter she's 21 Leo who's 18 as well obviously very apprehensive about their dad coming here but ho hopefully they they are proud of what I'm doing so listen I'm here doing a concert I know you are <laughs> I heard a rumor 
You're a bit of a it's guitarist. A rumor, Gary. Is, um, it, is it only a rumour? <laughs> it's a rumour. We're going to have a little sound check this afternoon. If you want to come along, I, I really look forward to that, Gary. Yeah. Uh, do you have a guitar with you? I've I brought a tiny little one with me. Um, I would be honoured if you would sign at some point for I me. I will. We'll, we'll have a little sound check and hopefully get you on stage with us. Yeah, I'd, no, I'd like that. Big jam. OK, yeah, yeah big I'm, jam. I'm, there I'm, you go. I'm, oh, now I'm, we're talking I'm the I'm language. That. That's yeah, the language. Definitely up for that. Definitely. I can't imagine it. At this point in my life, making such a life-changing decision, no, I can't. I I'm going the other way, actually. I, 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 I struggle to travel anymore because I like being at home too much. I like being near the kids. And I asked him what he misses the most. And before I'd even finished my sentence, family, of course. It's, yeah, it's another world. On concrete blast walls outside the Apache helicopter hangars, there's graffiti that has been left by the crews who have served here. Wing Commander Pip Harding tells me that it began in 2006 when the first Apache crews started to record their time in Afghanistan. These paintings are a real, a real diary of, of what this last eight, ten years has been like in Afghanistan. This war gallery has not been seen before and will probably be left behind. This is the latest one here. It's a little bit of, because I guess we're, we're on our way out. It's almost like going over the, into the sunset, right. disappearing. But I think the, the most inspiring bit for me was the most recent painting. It was just so hopeful. You know, it was like a window to a, a new era and a, and a new time and the, and the birth of a new country. It must have felt great to, to paint that and leave it behind. I'm left in no doubt looking at the graffiti that the threats here are still very real. Well, I'm guessing there's been many stages to being here, though, hasn't there? Yeah, there's exactly some, that. Some yes. very difficult and dark. Yeah, absolutely. But a lot of these, um, they, they clearly show times not so good. That's it. And you'll see the ones on the other side, I think, the similar was where it first started. Right. So we've gradually moved and evolved that way. <laughs> What's the intelligence is somewhere out on the field. Um, clearly someone needs help somewhere. We're seeing we are at war.